Shalom, call Halal, Yahawa, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who taught me this truth and rule well. Salutation and salutations to the brothers out there that are laboring and pushing this truth in truth and in sincerity and in charity and risking their lives and their freedom to do so. To you, I say Shalom, to the Akim and to the Akwaf, that be you, brothers and sisters. Adawan Rataza, that is to say, Lord willing. Hopefully, by the end of this lesson, you'll be edified. This is your brother Amawan Ibad from the GMS Miami camp. Back again with another lesson to the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. To feed the lambs of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, as commanded. <coughs> and this lesson is going to be entitled, The Fishers Will Become Hunters. Okay? The Fishers Will Become Hunters. Okay, and I'm going to start in the book of Matthew. Okay? One of the Gospels. Matthew, the fourth chapter, and the 18th verse. And it says, And Yahweh Shai, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishers. Okay? That's speaking about real fish in the sea. Okay? Food to eat. Okay? Fish. Verse 19, and it says, and he said unto them, Follow me. This is red letter. This is our Lord Yahweh Shai speaking. And he told them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Okay, so the Lord told them to follow him, and he's going to make them fishers of men. Okay? All right? By way of preaching the word. Okay? Being in the ministry. Okay? They were, they were the disciples um, of the Lord who would go on to be the apostles, okay? Which, uh, the word apostle just means uh, sent away. They were sent to do the work. Uh, verse 20, it says, And they straightway left their nets and followed him. So they was in the right spirit, okay? Um, right, so at the end of the day, the, uh, the, the, the fishers, who are the men of the Lord who go out to uh, teach and preach the word of the Lord, okay, they are fishers at the moment, okay? But um, they're going to become hunters. A time a time is going to come when, they, when, when they're going to have that spiritual power, okay? There is a scripture, uh, as a matter of fact, I think it's in Psalms, Psalms 110. If I can grab that real quick. Psalms 110. Verse 3. It says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Meaning, when you get that spiritual power, because um, our enemy was blessed with the sword. Esau was blessed with the sword. Isaac blessed Esau with the fatness of the earth. And he was told by, by his sword he would rule. So his blessing was a sword also. Okay? But it says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. So, meaning, uh, we can, <clears throat> we don't do this thing carnally. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, as the scriptures say. We are spiritual people. And the Lord said to wait upon him until the day that he rises up to the praise. So we can't take this thing from a carnal perspective in no kind of way. We spiritual people, so we, we waiting on the, the, the power of the Lord. Certain men of the Lord are going to be given spiritual powers, and that's why they're going to go from fishers to hunters, because they're gonna they're gonna hunt <clears throat> those that have planted and sowed wickedness in the earth, which is the elite. Okay, they are the wicked. All right, uh, 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 the top elite uh, of Esau, man. All right, it says verse three again. Psalms 110 verse 3, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, and the beauty, and the beauties of holiness, of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. So yeah. Um that time is coming where you're gonna have a change where you're going from being on the highways and the byways, alright? 
preaching the word, all right, making them body a living sacrifice to a time where you're going to become hunters, man, to hunt these, uh, these wicked men that are, that are, that are wrecking Hovac on the earth, man, with their evil agendas and diabolical plans. It's going to come to a point where they're going to be uh, uh, chained up. Okay, um, let's get Jeremiah I think it was 16 or 14. Uh, yes, verse 16 and verse 16. It says, um, Behold, I will send for many fishes, right? See, the Lord told uh, Peter, Simon, and his brother Andrew, right, that, that to follow him, he's going to make them fishes of men. See, yeah, this is the book of Jeremiah chapter 16. Right? And it says, Behold, I will send many fishers, right? Those that are going to preach the word of the Lord. They're going to be fishing for those souls. Those who hear the word of the Lord and, 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 and adhere to it and, and obey his commandments to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the saving of their house, man. All right? Um, it says, Behold, I will send for many fishers, said the Lord, and they shall fish them, Right? What's going to happen after? After you finish fishing them, it says, and after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. There you go. So the hunters, the hunting season is coming pretty soon, man. Why? For all the evil that Esau has done and these other nations, man. Okay? Uh, the scripture speaks about, I was at Psalms uh, 149, speaks about, Binding up their nobles with chains and feathers of, and feathers of iron for the wrong they have done, man. For the controversy of Zion, the things that they have done to the children of Israel, man. The real children of Israel. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, so-called, who blood lineage goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. For the atrocities that you have suffered, man. Okay? You see? There's no going around it, man. Because the, the, the things that were done unto you, the scriptures say there is... There, there, um, it, it, it hasn't been done to any other nation as it has been done unto the, 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 the uh, unto Jerusalem, man. Okay, let me see if I could, um, if I could locate. This is First Maccabees chapter two, and verse ten. It says, "What nation had not a part in her kingdom?" And gotten of her spoils. So I mean all you other nations man. Have gotten of the spoils. Uh, 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 of Jerusalem man. Okay. When you read the book of Psalms. 83. It goes into those nations. Okay. That was confederate. That came and said come and. Let, let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel be no more in remembrance man. Alright. It said that they were, they were confederate with one consent. Roughly paraphrasing man. All right, and the scripture also say, <laughs> nowhere in the earth has it been done as it has been done to Jerusalem. Roughly paraphrasing, okay, that scripture they 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 put it on our people, man. You see, and they rejoice at our downfall. You see, but at the end of the day, these wicked kings and the elites of the earth that's coming with these diabolical plans at the end of the day. A lot of them are going to escape the destruction only to be rounded up later to pay for what they've done by going into slavery, according to the Bible. You see? Now, let's go to the book of Habakkuk. Okay? Because all the atrocities these people have done. Alright? Slavery. Putting our people in slavery. Okay? Taking over our land. Okay? separating us from our family they did a lot of stuff that's very dark and diabolical man and they rejoiced in doing so okay but we're living in a time now where shameful spewing is, is, is on their glory man you know we're living in a time of the information age where knowledge is increased and the world is beginning to point fingers at who did what okay but this is Habakkuk right Book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, and verse 16. It says, Thou art filled with shame for glory. 
Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. Right? We live in a time right now where shameful spewing is on your glory. This is the reason why they're taking down statues. Okay? Because they were proud and boasting in the things that they've done, the atrocities that they've done. They made statues, and now they're pulling them down. Okay, they're trying to take the history out of the school about slavery and certain type of things because shameful spewing is on their glory. The way they uh, uh, attain the daughter of Babylon, a.k.a. America, breaking all the treaties with, 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 with Gad, Reuben, and Issachar. Okay, the tale of, uh, the tale of tres, tears, it's like a trail of tears, all these different things, putting them on reservations. Okay. You see, it's, it's no, it's no, that's a scripture that come to mind real quick. It's the book of um, Psalms chapter uh, 55, Psalms 55 and 20 goes into that. It says, he had put forth his hand against such as be at peace with him, right? The natives were at peace with him. He had broken his covenant, right? All those treaties were broken, man. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, right? But war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. And that's why the scriptures say, okay, Ecclesiastes is otherwise known as Sirach, right? Uh, the 12th chapter and the 10th verse where it says, Never trust thine enemy, for even as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Okay, roughly paraphrasing. Never trust the enemy, man. You see? But we're living in a time right now where he's being exposed and this is the reason why he want to come down having great wrath. All right? Because right now he's losing the information war because one of his biggest attributes other than the sword which he, which he was blessed with was deceit. Revelation 20 and verse 8 say, you know, he would go out to deceive the nations, man. You see? He would, he would go out to deceive the nations. Now, um, let's go into a scripture that's now going to kind of elude me. Um, What's that? Jeremiah, Jeremiah 49 and 10. All right, Jeremiah 49 and verse 10. And it says, but I have made Esau bare. So we're living in a time where he's being made bare. I have uncovered his secret places, right? His secret places is being uncovered through the spirit. Right now, <clears throat> the scriptures say, blessed are your eyes for they see. All right? And to Adiyah Bashimel Shai for the eye south. Okay? Right, through the spirit to be able to discern, okay, and see right through the devil, man. Okay, I have uncovered the secret places, and this is how it's uncovered through the spirit. We know what's up. The scriptures say, uh, uh, Amos chapter 3, verse 7 Surely the Lord will do nothing but he reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So, <clears throat> the Lord gives the right hand the secrets of the left hand, okay. It says, and he shall not be able to hide himself. So we're living in a time right now where he can't hide himself. When you read uh, Isaiah, the 47th chapter, it's, it goes into how his enchantments is not going to work anymore. Stargazers, astrologers, okay? They ain't going to be able to, 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 to help you in this day. And this time, you labor from you as, from you as a youth. You labor in enchantments and these kind of things. But we're living in a time right now where... Because this is only, remember, this is only for our punishment, you know, because we transgress against the Lord. But that's, we only need to be, a, we only need to be punished for a certain period of time. Not forever. You see? So we're living in a time where the curses are slowly coming up, because we live under the curses of the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter from the 15th verse on down to the 68th verse. But when the Lord returns, that's going to fully come off of us. But Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter and the 7th verse, it says, and I will put all these curses upon thine enemies. So those curses are going to go on to you, Esau. All right? And the other nations. You see? And we're going to have the blessings. But our blessings, okay, through the spirit of the Abba is going to be forevermore. It says, but I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered the secret places. Right? And one of the secret places, again, in the end times, remember, you're not going to be able to hide from the elect men that have spiritual powers because we're going to know all things. We're going to know where you're at and we're going to come into your bunkers and we're going to retrieve you. 
and receive you and put you head first into slavery. It says, But I have made Esau bear and have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. You see? You're going to have to pay for the things that you've done. I'm going to jump down to verse 12. It says, For thus said the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. <clears throat> and as thou he that shall altogether go unpunished, thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. So we went through slavery. You're going to have to drink of the cup of slavery. It's written in the Bible. There's nothing that you could do. That's of a surety. Because the word of the Lord is faithful and true. You ain't going to be able to do nothing against that. You're going to have to stand for all the atrocities that you did. This, this is written in the scriptures. This is not my word. This is the word of God. Okay? Uh, let's get a quick precept. Book of... Uh, <clears throat> this scripture comes to mind. Um, Isaiah 33 and verse 1. It says, Woe. Woe means destruction. Woe to thee that spoilest, right? And thou wast not spoiled. There you go. And dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. As soon as this man came into power, he just started spoiling, spoiling the nations. It says, When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And when thou shalt, and when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. Right. So he didn't, he didn't consider the latter end. He didn't consider the latter end of the things that they've been doing, man. Okay, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, the scriptures say. Okay, uh, what's that? Revelation 13 and verse 10. Okay, uh, what's this? Numbers 35 and 33. Let's grab that real quick. It says, so ye, sh so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. And we know this man, love his sword, as, as Christopher uh, 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 combusts us, all right? Uh, uh, he's, uh, he has a, a saying, he couldn't put down his sword for one hour, okay? They love blood, as the scripture says, since thou... Has not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. You see, so you have to remember at the end of the day, they never consider their, their latter end, as I tell you in the book of Psalms, Psalms 1, uh, Psalms 49 and 11. Okay, their inward thought, this is their inward thought. Psalms 49 and 11, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. So they, they never thought they was going to drop out of rulership. But as, as all kingdoms drop out of rulership, except the Lord be with thee which is going to be the kingdom of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, okay? That's going to be an everlasting kingdom. It says, Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names, right? Start with Esau who conquered these different lands. And their inward thought is that their houses shall last forever. But remember Job 14 and verse 5, it's, which speaks about they have a time, a boundary that they cannot pass, which the Lord gave them. So they only could rule for so long. This is Job chapter 14 and verse 5. It says, seeing his days are determined. Right. The Most High have determined his days. The number of his months are with thee. With who? The Most High. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. That meaning, see, you're not going over it by an hour. You're not going to go over your time by 30 minutes. You ain't going to go over your time by 10 minutes. You ain't going over your, you're not going over your time by the, not even a minute, man. Not even 30 seconds. When your time is up, you going to know. You going to know. All right? I was trying to crack them clouds, man. And the scripture speaks about just one hour. And before that, all right, the hunters, those who are given spiritual powers, man, they're going to be uh, 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 doing what they got to do to protect the elect. Okay? You see? So, yeah, the fishes are going to become hunters, man. You see? They ain't no going around it because these elites are going to try to go into hiding for the, for the wickedness that they've done, you know. They're going to try to go into hiding, man, saying hide, hide, hide us from the face of him. Let's get, let's go to Amos. Let's go to Amos, the ninth chapter. This is Amos, the ninth chapter. 
outside of verse 1, it says, I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the post may shake, and cut them in the head of Salaki. It says, All of them I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. It says, Though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. Right? So, these elites are going to try to go into these bunkers and different things because they know destruction is coming. It says, though they climb up to heaven, then will I bring them down. Right? They're going to try to go into space, space hotels. Okay? It says, and though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out fence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, then will I command the serpent and he shall bite them, right? That serpent is speaking of Leviathan, man. Okay? Leviathan, that's what it's speaking of. Um, let's get a precept for that. Leviathan is spoken of in Job the uh, 41st chapter. That's the serpent under the sea. Because they're going to have, <coughs> they're going to have retreats under the sea and all. Okay, they're trying to hide from the face of the Lord and from the destruction that's happening on the earth. But the Lord said he's going to command Leviathan, man, that serpent. But let's get a precept in the book of Psalms. Psalms 104. Psalms 104. Um, okay. I start of verse 25. It says, Psalms 104 and 25. It says, So is the great and wide sea. Wherein things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. And one of those great beasts is Leviathan, man, the serpent. He's going to be commanded to bite them, for, to bite them, man. It says, verse 26, there go the ships. There is that Leviathan, which is the serpent, who thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee, right? They, are, they wait for the Lord commandment that they may give them their meat in due season, right? That's like the fowls of heaven. Scripture speaks about the, the fowls of heaven getting getting carcasses to eat, okay? The Lord feed them, man. All right, it says that they give, that, that thou givest them, they, they gather, thou openest thy hand, they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. So going back to uh, what's that Amos? Amos chapter nine, right? Amos chapter nine, right? It says um, verse three again. It says, "And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence." So you ain't gonna be able to know where you're gonna be able to run and hide, you elites. You can hide, thinking you can escape the destruction, and you're gonna escape the destruction only to be rounded up later. It says, and though they be hid from thy sight in the bottom of the sea, because so, so some of them are going to be in space, these space retreats. Some of them are going to be under the sea. Some of them are going to be in some of these different bunkers under the ground. It says, then will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. Right? That's speaking of Leviathan. Okay? So uh, let's go from there. We're going to go to what's that? Uh, Isaiah. Isaiah, the uh, 20th chapter. I think goes into it. Um, 28th chapter, no, 24, 24, so like Emma said, the 24th chapter. Okay, Isaiah 24, verse 21, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on, that are on high. That's speaking of the elites of Esau, the wicked, and you other nations, man. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the hosts of the high ones that are on high. Right? Your kings, your nobles. Right? Those are in high position. And the kings of the earth upon the earth. Right? This is going to happen on the earth. Verse 22. It says, And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. And who got to gather them? The elect. Those that are given spiritual powers. Those uh, fishers who became hunters. Because they have gotten spiritual powers. 
Okay, certain of the Lord's men are going to be have, going to uh, be given spiritual powers. It says that they shall gather them together. That they is the elect. All right, uh, th those ones who are given spiritual powers, as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Who they're going to be visited by? The men of the Lord. Those who are given the spiritual powers. Okay, because after, as a matter of fact, after the Lord returns. You know, Scripture speaks about you being changed in a twinkling of an eye. So all, all of the men of the Lord are going to have spiritual powers. Okay, when you come down out of them uh, 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 ships, man. Because the Scripture goes into that uh, New Jerusalem coming down. Let's get that Revelation. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. Okay, because Jerusalem is the people. Okay, before it's a place. It says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, speaking of the people, coming down from the most high out of heaven, out of the, what the world ignorantly calls UFOs. He's speaking about the, the chariots, okay, of our Lord, which is the chariots of our salvation. Okay, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Okay, so coming down back to the earth. This is after you change and, and those new bodies, immortal. Okay, with the law, such as the commandments placed in your inward part, okay, meaning that you would never sin again, meaning that you would never die. You would be immortal, and you're going to have powers, spiritual powers, okay? So, before the destruction, certain men are going to be given spiritual powers, and after, even after destruction, when those, when the elect is beamed up, I don't want to wrap I'm of that special number, and I do pray for the brothers and the sisters that believe, Okay? In this truth and believe on Yahweh Hashem Shai, even after the destruction, okay, or uh, during destruction when when the when the elect is beamed up, they're going to be automatically changed. First Corinthians the fifteen chapter goes into that. So when they come back down again, what we read right here, Revelation the twenty first chapter, and I John the second verse, and I John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, which is the people before the place coming down from the Most High out of heaven, coming back down to the earth, okay. At this point, you're going to have spiritual powers, man. Because you're going to be immortal. Okay? Immortal. Alright? New bodies, man. Living forever with spiritual powers. Okay? And this is who's going to round up... Uh, round up the elites, man. Uh, uh, the wicked ones. That being causing wrecking hole back on the earth. Did not the Lord say, uh, Revelation chapter 11 and verse 18, that thou shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth, roughly paraphrasing. Okay. Uh, another scripture that comes to mind, I'm going to get it and I'm going to close out right here in the book of, um, let's get this in Psalms. Psalms 149, we can close out right here. Okay. This is Psalms 149. And I'll start at, uh, I start at verse 5. It says, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high priests of the Most High, like you, let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand. Why? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Right? To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron. You see? This, this this links up with Isaiah 24. We just read. They, they're going to be gathered together in a pit, man. Okay? Verse uh, 9. It says, To execute upon them the judgment written, This honor have all his saints. Praise ye Yahweh. You see? So at the end of the day, the, the, the fishes are going to become hunters, man. There's nothing you can do about it. It's written in the scriptures. All right? So I'm going to end it there with that. Hope you are edified. On to the next one. Shalom.